before we get started with this next video, I just want to take a minute and recognize a YouTuber that has helped me throughout this build uh, more than he'll ever know. Uh, one of the YouTubers I follow is MyVintageIron7512. I'll put a link to his channel in the description below. Uh, I've never met him. I don't know him. Uh, we're kind of on opposite sides of the country. But his instructional videos and how-tos, uh, explaining in detail uh, procedures and problems that you might encounter have been just extremely beneficial to me, especially his series on the uh, 383 small block Chevy Stroker build. Uh, he also has excellent videos on the Vortec heads, uh, just about anything you want to know about engine building. Um, this guy's not only very knowledgeable, but he's a good teacher as well. So I urge you to go check him out. My Vintage Iron 7512. I'm getting ready to degree the cam here. I've already determined my top dead center. I'll show you how I went about that. Uh, I've got the balancer on. I've got the degree wheel on. And it, I've got my dial indicator set up here. I made a little makeshift pointer out of a coat hanger uh, using a head bolt to, to wrap it around. And hopefully you can see that that pointer is on zero, top dead center. It may look like it's off a little bit, but that's actually this camera angle uh, where I have to set my camera. But uh, trust me, it is on zero. Hopefully you can see that that dial indicator is on zero also. In getting this set up to find true top dead center, meaning there are a few degrees where the piston doesn't move as the crankshaft comes up, as it's breaking over. There's a few degrees where the piston doesn't move and you want the crankshaft in the center of that, that uh, period where it doesn't move. So the way to do that, I got it as close as I could watching my dial indicator, bringing it up, watching for the piston to stop. I put my pointer on zero, and then what you do is you go 50 thousandths both ways and see what your degrees read on both sides. And then uh, usually one will be off, one will be larger than the other. You want those to be equal. So you keep adjusting. I'll show you here. I'm going to continue clockwise until my dial indicator goes down 50 thousandths. There's 10, 20, 30, 40. And right there is 50 thousandths. And if I look at my degree wheel, it is now reading 12 degrees. Okay, I've tried to reposition the camera so that it's straight on with the pointer now. So hopefully you can see that that uh, degree wheel now reads 12 degrees. And if you can see, the, the dial indicator is reading 50 thousandths. So I'm 50 thousandths beyond top dead center. Now I need to go back the other direction. And because I'm rolling the engine backwards, I'm going to go beyond 50 thousandths before top dead center. I'm going to go to probably 80 and then I will bring it back up. That just takes any slack out of the chain to make sure that we're dealing uh, with everything equal in the normal direction. So I want, it, I want it to come up on 50 in the direction the engine will actually be running. And I'll see what my degrees are there. Zero. Now we're coming back off. There's 50. There's 80. Now I'm going to come back up until I get to 50. And there I'm on 50. 
can see my dial indicators on 50 thousandths um, and that is before top dead center we go over and check the degree wheel pointer you can see now that's on 10 degree or 12 degrees there so I know that my zero is true top dead center where the number one piston is in the center of its travel now that I've got true top dead center located I can take my dial indicator off the piston uh, I don't need it any longer and I'll switch to a different indicator uh, that actually goes in the lifter the hole that holds the lifter and rides on the, the camshaft so we can start checking the cam specs to make sure they match what's printed on the cam card. I've printed out my cam card and I've got it here and we're going to start going through those specs one by one. Okay, I've got my uh got my dial indicator in a uh, lifter bore now it's in the exhaust lifter bore hopefully you can see that uh, that is zeroed out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this um, it's zeroed out because it's on the base circle it's at a point where it does not move now I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to count the revolutions and the thousands uh, of lift and I'm checking the exhaust lobe lift is what I'm checking so I'm going to go ahead and rotate it uh, and watch the uh, the dial indicator you can see that the indicator is zeroed I know I'm on the base circle because it, uh, it's not moving. Alright, now it's starting to move. And I know, go all the way around, that's 100 thousandths, 200 thousandths, 310, 20, 30, 339 is what uh, what I'm reading and according to my cam card the exhaust lift should be 338.3 or .3383 and I'm reading .339 I guess it is maybe about halfway between the 8 and the 9 so uh, it appears to be dead on at that point, 3383 exhaust lobe lift. Now I'm going to move the indicator to the intake lobe and check the same thing. Rotate it, make sure it's not moving. It's on the base circle. Zero the indicator. One, two, three, ten. 20, okay, 323, and again, um, it's 0.3233 is, um, is what the, it calls for, so that appears to be dead on. Okay, so I'm still on my intake lobe. Um, what I'm going to do next is check the uh, intake center line. 
and I know I'm at the top of my load lift on the intake load. So what I'm going to do is zero my dial indicator. I zeroed my dial indicator and now I'm going to do basically the same procedure I did to find top dead center. I'm going to come down off that cam load uh, past 50 thousandths and then I'm going to go back up to 50 thousandths and I'm going to read my degrees here on my uh, degree wheel and I, then I'll go the other direction, go, pat, or go to 50 thousandths going clockwise and uh, I'll read the degree and halfway in between those two readings will be my intake lobe center line. There's 10, 20, 30, 40, I'm going to go past 50, and then come back to 50. Dead on 50. And my pointer here is reading 59 degrees. So I'm going to write that down. Now I'm going to go back up the cam load and down the other side to 50 thousandths on the other side. So there's the top of it. Now we're going to go back down the other side of the cam load and I don't have to go past. I can stop right at 50 if I can. Oh, too far. That is one four, that wheel is reading 149, 149 degrees. This says degree the intake to 104 degrees. So uh, my intake center line is correct. The next thing I'm going to check is the intake. Uh, see, I'm on the exhauster. I'm going to check the exhaust duration, which means I'm going to get back down on the base circle of the cam. Okay, I've got this uh, cam degreed. Everything came out just fine. Um, as many times as I barred this thing over, I think my ring should be pretty, pretty well seated by now. Uh, everything came out within one degree of what it says on the cam card, and I'm confident that the cam is correct and is installed correctly and that the error is in my degreeing. Uh, this is the first time I've ever degreed a cam. Uh, never really even put in a cam before. Just uh, I've changed timing sets and of course uh, doing that just uh, set them up dot to dot. But uh, I'm confident my cam is uh, 
I'm confident that the cam matches the cam card and I'm confident that it's installed correctly and we're ready to move on. The reason for degreeing the camshaft is to verify that the camshaft matches the specs on the cam card and also to make sure that it's installed properly. We're using an aftermarket crankshaft from SCAT. We've got a timing chain set from Trick Flow and then a camshaft from Bullet Cams. The keyway in the crankshaft could be off a few degrees, the timing chain set could be off, or the camshaft could be off. But uh, by going through the degreeing process, we verify that everything is where it is supposed to be, where it is intended to be, and that uh, the camshaft is in the correct timing with the crankshaft rotation. I degreed the camshaft, I have my timing cover installed, and I got my timing pointer installed. I used the dial indicator and brought this number one piston back up to top dead center, true top dead center. Hopefully you can see that the timing pointer lines up pretty much dead on, zero. Next step is going to be flipping this engine over and getting the oil pump and oil pan installed. 